The kidneys have two main ways to maintain acid-base balance. Their cells reabsorb bicarbonate, or HCO3-, from the urine back to the blood, and they secrete hydrogen ions into the urine. By adjusting the amounts reabsorbed and secreted, they can balance the bloodstream's pH. Now, our kidneys filter blood continuously by distributing the blood that comes into the kidney to millions of tiny functional units called nephrons. Each nephron is made up of a glomerulus, or a tiny clump of capillaries, where blood filtration starts. When blood passes through a glomerulus, about one-fifth of the plasma leaves the glomerular capillaries and goes into the renal tubule. The renal tubules function to reabsorb the good stuff, like water and electrolytes, and leave behind the bad stuff, like waste products and acid. The renal tubule is a structure with several segments, the proximal convoluted tubule, the U-shaped loop of Henle with a thin descending limb and a thick ascending limb, and the distal convoluted tubule, which goes back up again before emptying into the collecting duct, which collects the final urine. Each of these tubules is lined by brush border cells, which have two surfaces. One is the apical surface that faces the tubular lumen and is lined with microvilli, which are tiny little projections that increase the cell's surface area to help with solute reabsorption. The other is the basolateral surface, which faces the paratubular capillaries, which run alongside the nephron. So with bicarbonate reabsorption, as the filtrate leaves the glomerulus, it first goes through the proximal convoluted tubule. At first, this filtrate has the same concentration of electrolytes as the plasma it came from. But when a molecule of bicarbonate approaches the apical surface of the brush border cell, it binds to hydrogen that was secreted by the brush border cell in exchange for a sodium ion, and this forms carbonic acid. At this point, an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase type 4 that lurks in the tubule in the microvilli, kind of like a shark, swims along and splits the carbonic acid into water and carbon dioxide. Unlike charged bicarbonate anions, which are stuck in the tubule, the water and carbon dioxide happily diffuse across the membrane into cells or carbonic anhydrase type 2 facilitates the reverse reaction, combining them to form carbonic acid which dissolves into bicarbonate and hydrogen. A sodium bicarbonate co-transporter on the basolateral surface snatches up the bicarbonate and a nearby sodium, and then shuttles both into the blood. Alternatively, a bicarbonate chloride exchanger exchanges bicarbonate with chloride leaving the bloodstream to enter the cells. All this chemical trickery effectively moves 99.9% .9 of the filtered bicarbonate that's in the tubule back into the bloodstream. Now, hydrogen ions, with their positive charge, don't want to naturally pass through the cell membranes and into the urine. They need to be pushed out. And there are two mechanisms that do this. One mechanism is a sodium-hydrogen countertransport. With this, a carrier protein in the apical wall binds a hydrogen ion from the cell and a sodium ion in the tubular fluid. As that sodium ion's pushed in, the hydrogen ion gets pushed out, kind of like a revolving door. Remember, this is in the proximal tubule, but in the distal tubule and collecting ducts, there's another mechanism that involves alpha intercalated cells. These cells have a different pump that uses the energy of ATP to push hydrogen ions into the tubule. The urine, though, can only hold so many free hydrogen ions because the pH starts to drop really low and the tubules can't maintain a urine pH below about 4.5. So to get around this limit and hold more hydrogen ions, the urine has chemical buffers, which bind to the hydrogen ions and prevent the pH from dropping too low. The most important is the ammonia buffer system, in which the kidneys use a process called ammoniogenesis. Ammoniogenesis starts when the proximal convoluted tubule cells break down amino acids like glutamine into ammonia, or NH3. The ammonia is lipid soluble, so it diffuses freely into the tubule, where it combines with a hydrogen ion to form an ammonium ion, or NH4. Ammonium combines with chloride in the urine. And because ammonium chloride is only weakly acidic, the urine pH doesn't drop much, even though it has a lot of hydrogen ions. Most of this ammonium is lost in the urine, which helps the kidneys get rid of a large amount of hydrogen. A second buffer system uses phosphate. Monohydrogen phosphate, or HPO4-2-, enters the tubule from the plasma. 
monohydrogen phosphate's poorly reabsorbed from the tubules, so it ends up concentrating there. It acts as a buffer by combining with secreted hydrogen ions to form dihydrogen phosphate, or H2PO4-, which is then peed out in the urine. Alright, as a quick recap, the kidneys help maintain pH balance of the blood. In the nephron, the proximal convoluted tubule cells are able to reabsorb the bicarbonate ions, and cells in the proximal as well as the distal convoluted tubule and collecting ducts secrete hydrogen ions that are carried out into the urine using the ammonia and phosphate buffer systems.